We are on the review packet for section 7-1 through 7-3. So starting on 7-1A, the calculations below show the amount of money in a bank account. We have our initial deposit at the end of the first year. We've got some interest added on. Here's our rate. Okay, at the end of the second year, you can see it shows it twice. That's just like anything multiplied by itself. That would be raising to the second power, just another way to write it. Some more increase. We notice it went up by 30 and then it went up by 3180, so a little bit more. And it's compounding the interest because it was raised by a percent. And then it was raised by that same percent, but we had more money in it. So that same percent is going to produce greater interest. So the annual yield is the percentage that it's increasing by. So we're going up by 0 0.06, which is 6%. So we see that it went up by $30. That $30 is 6% of 500. The principal is what you start with. So that's $500. And the total interest paid during the two year period, we started at 500 and we went to 561.80. So the interest was $61. And 80 cents. Your principal plus your interest is going to be the total amount of money that you have. Okay, number two, write an equation that could be used to find the amount in an account if $2,500, so you're starting with that, is invested at 5.6%. We got to move that two spots to the left. That's 0 0.056. Since this is being invested and it's growing, you're going to have more than 100%. 100% is what you started with. So we need to put a 1 in front of this, 1.056 raised to however many years. In this case, it says 15. So for Part B, you write an expression that can be used to find the amount P dollars was invested. So instead of 2,500, we're just going to put P. We don't know how much. Same annual yield, so it's going to be 1.056 for T years. So you're plugging in for T. All right, a bank uses a spreadsheet below to show the amount in a savings account earning 7% interest. The principal invested is 600. So you can see we are going up a little bit. We went up $42 on the first one. And just looking at all of these numbers as we jump here to letter A, and we're going to say which expression is it? If it was 0.7, that's less than 1, it would be getting smaller. So we can go ahead and eliminate that. If it was 1.7, that would be 70% increase. 70% is pretty close to 100%. So that would be a really big increase. The fact that it was 600 and it went up by $42 tells me it's probably not 70%, but we'll come back to that one. We'll leave it as a possibility. Letter C, this one's going up by 7%. That seems to make the most sense, especially because that's what it says right here, 7% interest. And this one shows the 7% in here, but because there's not a 1 in front of it, if you multiply by 7%, you're going to get the 42 if this was a 1. So this would just be calculating what is 7%, but not going to calculate the balance in the savings account. So we need the 1 in front of it so that it includes the 600 and adds an extra 7%. So C is the correct answer here. So what number should appear in cell B6? So that would be the next one here. So we could go ahead and use our equation if we wanted to. We know that it's 600 times 1.07 raised. And if we plug in 4 for the year, that will give us our answer. We're going to round that off. 786.47. You also could have just taken this one and multiplied that by 1.07. What number should appear in cell C6? So C and 6 lines up right here. So that's the amount of interest that was earned. So if I put 786.47 right here, this is telling you how much it went up. It went from 600 to 642. That went up 42. Then it went from 642 to 686.94. So that's how much it went up by. This amount that it went up by was this much. So we have to calculate how much did it go up total. So we're going to take the 786.47 and we're going to minus what it was, 
and that's an increase of 5144. So what trend do you notice in the annual interest column? And what you notice is the interest amount is increasing. each year. So the percentage isn't changing. It's 7% every year, but the amount of interest you're earning every year is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because you're getting 7% on the new larger amount, which is going to be a larger amount of interest. So on to the next page, 7-2-B. We're going to match these three scenarios to these. Just taking a quick look at these. If the growth factor is 2, that means it's doubling. The growth factor is 1.02, that's an increase of 2%. And if it's a 1.2, that's 20%. Okay, so we have a 20% increase, we have a 2% increase, and we have something doubling, which is 200%. Okay, so plant sprouts to 2 centimeters tall. All of these start with 2. For the next T times its measure, the plant has grown by 20%. So 20% is 0.2. This is letter C. Number two, a couple has two children. After they grow up, each child has two children. When their children grow up, each of them has two. The pattern continues on and on and on. Okay, so how many people have been born in the family after T generations? So you have two people, and then there's two children. So you have two people, then you have four people, right? After each child has grown up, they're going to have two each. So we have two children, and each one of them has two. So you're going to have four more kids, and we already had four people all together, so now we have eight. So you can see we are doubling. Two becomes four, four becomes eight, on and on and on. This is letter A, and you could have got that by process of elimination. If you just jump to number three, savings account has a 2% annual yield. 2% is 0 0.02, so that's letter B. Okay, Becky's parents decided to give her an allowance of 25 cents per week. <laughs> Not very much, but hold on a second. They give her a choice of how her allowance will change over time. So choice A is that every six months she gets a raise of a dollar. So she's going to go all the way from 25 cents to a dollar 25 after six months. Okay, choice B is that every six months her allowance will double. So if she was at 25 cents, then it would be 50 cents. And then at six months later, it would be a dollar, and then two dollars, and then four dollars, on and on and on. So we got to figure out which one is the better deal, basically. So how many raises will she have received after four years? So every six months, she gets a raise, right? So she's going to get two per year. So if it's been four years, that's eight raises. What will her allowance be for choice A? after four years. So choice A, she gets a dollar raise every six months. So she'll have gotten eight raises. So basically eight dollar raises. So she's gonna make eight dollars more than she did. So after four years, she's gonna be making eight dollars and 25 cents. Now choice B at first sounds kind of silly because you go from 25 cents to 50 cents and 50 cents to a dollar where this one you'd already be up at two dollars and 25 cents and three dollars and 25 cents, okay? But eventually, because this is doubling, 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 it is going to catch up and pass it rather quickly once it does. So what will her allowance be for choice B after four years, so after eight raises? So you could do this piece by piece and actually write it out. So 25 cents after raise number one, she's going to be at 50 cents. Raise number two, she's going to be at a dollar. Raise number three, she's going to be at two dollars. And then four dollars and then eight dollars 16 32 and on her raise number eight she's going to be making 64 dollars so much much more so which option should becky choose well this is going to be based on how long this is going to be carrying on so you could kind of write that out. If she will only get an allowance of 
And let me check my spelling here. Allowance. Short term. A is better. Because for a little bit, we're going to have $1.25 compared to $0.50. Cents. We're going to have $2.25 compared to $1. We're going to have $3.25 compared to $2. Okay, then we're going to have $4.25 compared to $4. So it takes five raises, so I shouldn't say years, but five raises before it's going to get passed. But if she plans on keeping this allowance long term, choice B will be better. All right, number eight. Certain bacterium doubles in number every 30 minutes. Suppose you start with a culture of 10. How many times do the bacteria double in number after 12 hours? So if it's every 30 minutes, that's two per hour. So that's a total of 24. So what's the number of bacteria after 12 hours? So we can go ahead and actually double, 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 but let's go ahead and write an equation for this. We are starting with 10. Our growth factor here is two, because it's doubling. And up here, it's, we're not gonna put the 12 in hours, we're gonna put the number of times that this doubling has happened, which is the 24. And so if we take 10 times two raised to the 24, we get our answer of 167,000,772,160. Okay, so number nine on the back now. Here's our equation. So we're starting with two of something and it is tripling every however much time we're measuring. So to the right, we're going to make a quick table here. So an XY table. They want X to go all the way up to 4. So if I plugged in 0, 3 to the 0 is 1, times the 2 is 2. If I plug in 1, 3 to the 1 is 3, times 2 is 6. If I plugged in 2, 3 to the 2nd is 9. 3 squared is 9, times 2 is 18. Okay. We also can notice if this is the growth factor, it's tripling. This is times three. This is times three. This is times three. That's what's going on here. If I plugged in three, three to the third is 27, and 27 times two is 54. Of course, you could do that in your calculator, or you just do 18 times three. Okay, or we can now take 54 times three and get 162. Or we could go back to the equation and do 2 times 3 raised to the 4th, which will also get me the 162. All right, we're going to go ahead and graph these here. So I'm going to do 0. I'm just going to go ahead and just put them straight across like this because I don't think I have enough room to spread these out. And we have to get up to 162. So I'm going to go 50, 100, 150. 200, so I'm actually counting by 25, just not labeling every single one here. So zero is going to be on two, which is going to be basically almost at zero here. One and six, same thing, really low. This is 25, so 18 is going to be just below it for two. 54 for three is going to have to be just above the 50, and then by four, we're all the way up to 162. So this would be 175 because we're going up by 25s, 150, 175. So 162 is in here somewhere. So you can see it starts off slow, but exponential growth just takes off. Number 10, student researching a possible career, blah, 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 has lots of growth. The average pay will grow by 8.5%. Remember, that's 0 0.085. Just going to be careful. Don't make 85%, 8.5% every year. This year, the average salaries were, were 250,000. So that's what we are starting with. So to the right, let's make a table of values. Okay, and this is number of years. 
since we're starting. So year zero is where you're starting, and then one year later, two years, three years, four years. We're going to be starting at $250,000, and we're going to be increasing this by 8.5%. So you can multiply this by 1.085. That's what it's going to go up by. Or we can write the equation 250,000 times 1.085 raised to the number of years. Okay, so for the first one, we're going to be doing 250,000 times 1.085 raised to the first power, so we don't even need that. So 271,250. I'm going to just go ahead and use this equation, 1.085. Now it's raised to the second power, 294, 306, 25. Again, you could just take that number, and since it's already in the calculator, that might even be the faster way to do this, and just hit times 1.085. There's our next number. And we'll round this off, 28 cents. Again, you could have got that by going back here and plugging in 3, but we are just increasing by 8.5%, so times 1.085, 346, 464, 67, 68 if you round it up. And just a reminder, okay, this was year 4. I could have gone back to my original 250,000 times 1.085 raised to my x of 4, and it will also get me the same thing. So you can either go one at a time and just keep multiplying by this growth factor, 1.085, or go back to the original equation and just keep changing x to whatever it needs to be. Okay, they want us to graph these salaries for the first four years. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is years. This is going to be dollar amount we got to get all the way up to 300 and something thousand so I'm gonna go 100,000 200,000 300,000 400,000 so that means each line is actually 50,000 so starting at 250 at zero would be right here okay then after year one we're at 271 so then this is 250, this is 300, so right in between that would be 275, so it's going to be really close to the middle there for 271. 294 is going to be almost at 300. 319, okay, remember this is 3, and then 350, so it's not going to be too far above. And then 346 is still below the 350 line, so right here. Okay, number 11. Study shows that wind is the fastest growing energy source. Suppose that this is your equation. So we're starting with 1,200 something, and we are increasing because it's one point. We're increasing by 29%. This will represent the total wind power in megawatts in a given country where T is the number of years after 2003. So what do these represent? This represents 29% increase and 1,200 is the number of megawatts we started with, and we're starting in 2003. So in 2003, we are at 1,200 megawatts, and we're going to increase by 29%. So what does the equation predict for the amount of wind power in 2010? Biggest mistake people make is they want to plug 2010 into the equation. But it's since 2003. T is the number of years since then. So it's seven years later. So we're taking 1,200 times 1.29, increasing it by 29% per year. And it's been seven years. So we got to do 1,200 times 1.29 raised to the seventh power. And we're not talking about money here. So we can round this up to a nice 7,134. And the last page, in 2006, car cost this much. Where since we're on 7.3, we're looking at a depreciating, and this is where students start to get confused. So 8% is coming off, and we always have to start at 100%. So you have to think, if we're at 100% and we're going down 8%, that means we are ending up at 92% of what it used to be. So what will the value of the car be in 
2007. So we're going down 8%. So you technically could find 8% of the original price. Once you find 8%, you would have to then subtract it off because depreciate means it's going down by 8%. So once you've got 8%, you can subtract it, take it off the price, but you're adding extra steps. If we just think about the fact that it's now 8% less than it was, it's now 92%. So if you just take the original cost, 21,725, and multiply it by 0.92, you get your new price of 19900 87. So again, just to show what I was just explaining, if I took the original price, 21,725, times it by 8%, 0 0.08, I get that number, 1738. That's 8%. That's what it's going down by. So it's losing its value by $1,000, 738. So if I took the original price and subtracted $1,738 from it, again, I end up at the new Price. But if I want to get directly to the new price, I just find 92% of it. So write a formula. So we are starting with 21,725. We are going down, depreciating. So the, our growth factor needs to be less than 1. So when we multiply, it goes down. And again, you're not going to multiply by 8% because that's going to give you this number as the answer. And we just want to know how much it's worth, not how much is coming off of it. So we need to do the 0.92. And it's going to be raised to the T for the number of years. So how much will the 2006 car be worth in 2012? So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and plug in 6 for T because it's been 6 years. So 21,725 times 0 0.92 raised to the 6th power. 13,000. $173.06 if you want it there. The answer key just goes that far if you want to put the 0 0.06. That's perfectly fine. And so you can see we're at 6 here. When will it be less than 10,000? So let's do the same exact thing. And let's raise it to, let's try 8. And you can see we're at 11,000, so we're still too high. So 21,725 times 0.92. Let's try 10 years. Okay, after 10 years, I am under $10,000. So maybe it's 10, but we got to try 9 now. We got to go back and make sure it didn't go underneath after 9 years. And nope, after 9 years, I was still above 10,000. So it's 10 years later. It's asking you what year, though, not how many years, in what year. So 10 years later after 2006 would be 2016. Real quick, I want to show you a little trick for how we also could have found that number. If we go to our y equals, clear it all out, and plug in our equation. So 21,725 times 0.92 raised to the x. We put that equation in there and then go to our table. Okay, we can see here's your zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we could just scroll down our table until we found where it went under 10,000, boom, right there. So you could always plug in your equation into the y equals. Looking at the graph isn't necessarily gonna be super helpful in this case, but you could. And since we're starting up at 21,000, our graph would have to be zoomed out to that amount. Okay, right now we're just in standard form, so you're not even going to see it unless you zoom way out. But again, the table, much more useful. You can look at every single year right there and see how much it's going to be worth. Okay, number two, which equation represents a starting amount depreciating, so going down 13%. So everybody likes to pick letter B, but that would be incorrect. If it's going down 13%, first of all, this is going up. You had 100%, now you have 113%, so that's wrong. Okay, this is also wrong because now this is telling you you're at 13%. Not going down 13%, you are at 13%. Since we're going down 13%, again, 100% is what you started with. You went down 13%, you were going to be at 87%, which is letter C. Okay, and then they try to confuse you even more with letter D. This is 187%, so that would be an 87% increase. So that's obviously wrong. Okay, number three, write an equation in this 
form right here to describe the numbers in the calculator. So 240 is what you're starting with. And we're multiplying that by 0.6 over and over and over. And so we are just raising this to power. So this would be to the first power and second power, third power, on and on and on. So you can see this is what we started with. This is our growth factor, what we're multiplying by. And we just keep multiplying by that number as we add to the exponent. All right, number four. We are studying some anti antibodies. <laughs> The number may grow at a constant rate or it might grow exponentially. We're going to look at the two different cases. So they're going to look at how 100 antibodies might increase in these two separate cases. Case one, there's 30 more each day. Okay, and then case two, there's 20% more each day. Let x equal the number of days. So we're going to write an expression for the number of antibodies if 30 were added each day. So you're starting with 100 and you're just adding 30 every single day. So after day one, you'd be adding 30. After day two, you'd be adding 60 total. And then 90, 30 more each day. So this is just 100 plus 30x. Remember, this is constant. We're not adding a different amount. It's 30 every day. This will form a straight line. This is your y equals mx plus b form, straight line. Then write an expression for it increasing by 20%. That's exponential. So we're going back to our other formula. So we're starting with 100 timesing it by our growth factor. We want it to get bigger, so it needs to be over 1. So it's 1 point, 20 percent would be 0.2 raised to the number of days. We're going to go ahead and fill in the chart. Okay, you could actually just keep adding 30 here. So this is going to be 130, 160, 190, on and on and on. Or you could take these numbers, plug it into the equation, and run it. Okay, same thing here. 20% of 100 is 20, so this is going to be 120. But then from there, you're going to have to take 20% of that and then 20% of that. So you could just keep multiplying these. So here's one strategy. You could take 100 times 1.2, and you get 120. And then you could hit times 1.2, and you get 144 times 1.2. And you get 172.8. So you could just keep going down like that. And on the other one, you'd have 100 plus 30. And then just keep hitting plus 30, plus 30. So that's one strategy. Okay, you could go back to your equations and plug in the 4. Now for the next one, instead of taking the 172.8 and just times that by 1.2, you could go back to your original equation, 100 times 1.2 raised to the 4th. And that'll get you the next one. 207.36. Okay, one other option going back to what we were talking about here. If you put these in your formulas, so 100 plus 30x, and then your other formula, 100 times 1.2 raised to the x, and then just go to your table, you're going to have all these all set up for you. So 190, 220, 250, 280. 10, 340. Not that this would be hard math to do in your head, but you got it all right there in front of you. And then this side, especially, is going to be really nice. So 248.83, 298.6, 358.32, on and on and on. So rather than having to punch this in every single time, if you just put it in your y equals. It'll make the table for you, and you've got everything you need. You just copy it down. So a really good option if you can get used to doing that. Okay, and then just to answer some simple questions, which case gives more antibodies after four days? So we're just looking at four. That would be case one, right? 220 is going to be bigger. But after 10 days, the exponential is always going to pass it after a certain amount of time and then get way past it quickly. Okay, that's obviously going to be case two.